This video will be covering the topics of Q angle, Coxavera, and Coxavalga. To begin, we'll cover uh, Q angle first. So Q angle is a very common clinically taken measurement. Uh, Q angle, clinically, you can, learn, you can learn a couple things about a person by taking their Q angle, but one of the main things that we're going to learn is the angle at which the quadriceps are going to pull on this patella. The other thing that we're going to learn is we're going to understand the relationship between the hips down into the tibia along the length of the femur. So if you can, if you can kind of think we're, we're gaining ideas of the relationship between where the hips are and then where those knees are going to sit. And it's going to be more, it's going to be a little more descriptive than just a postural analysis where we're looking for maybe a gen, genuvalgum or a genuvarum, right? But we're actually taking a measurement to help us understand what the relationship is between this ASIS and the tibial tuberosity. Uh, so this Q angle is taken using a couple of bony landmarks. You can palpate the tibial tuberosity and then this patella. So the, the stationary arm you're going to align with the tibial tuberosity straight through the, uh, the medial patella, right, a sagittal cut, a mid-sagittal cut right through that patella. This will be your stationary arm. Your movement arm, you will align from the uh, superior portion of this patella up until the ASIS, this anterior superior iliac spine right here. So what you're doing is you're creating, creating an angle. You can see right in here. You're creating an angle between your stationary arm and your movement arm. And the, this angle is going to tell you the relationship between the hips down through the tibia. And it's going to give you a pretty good idea of the angle of pull of the quadriceps on this patella. So here's a couple of standards so that you can kind of compare when we take our Q angles in class. You can gain some ideas about the relationships. Uh, so just realize males and females are going to have different Q angles, right? With females generally having a wider, wider hips and males having narrower hips. So normal angles are anywhere between 13 and 18. However, uh, anything above a 15 in males you know, 13 to 15 because it's going to become a little bit relative, but anything above a 15 in males, you're, you're going to potentially begin to develop some problems. Anything above a 20 degrees in females will lead to a couple of these problems. So this is in regards to the wider hips that females typically have and males having the narrower hips. So a couple of things that are associated with wider Q angle. So if you pause and think about what the Q angle is telling you, again, remember, it's the relationship between the hips and the tibia. And specifically, it's going to give you a good idea of the angle of pull of the quadriceps in relation to that patella. So if we have an increased angle, you're going to be having more of a lateral pull on that patella. Therefore, that lateral pull can result in a couple things. Chondromalacia patella, that's the roughening of the articular cartilage on the backside of the patella. So just think if you're pulling that patella laterally and you're, sh you're jamming it into the lateral femoral condyle, you potentially have some, uh, some rough scraping that may occur leading to this roughening of that articular cartilage. The next one, a subluxing patella. If that angle of pull is enough lateral, it can actually pull the patella out of the femoral uh, groove in between the femoral condyles. So you can actually pull it laterally. Uh, you may by now have watched some of this, the videos about antiversion. Genuvalgum, hopefully you see that these two are generally connected, antiversion and the, val and the genuvalgum, right? Um, and then a couple other things, uh, lateral tibial torsion, maybe you actually, to try to compensate, you externally rotate that tibia, right? So a Q angle less than 10 to 13, so again, it's a little bit of a range, uh, but it's often associated with chondromalacia and or patella alta. And then a Q angle, so if you're sitting on the table and you have the person push their knee into the table that they're sitting on, uh, they should have a Q angle of 8 to 10 degrees because it's going to pull that um, patella a little bit laterally, and we can look at that in class. Uh, so that, that's that about the, the Q angle. So now we'll move in and we'll just cover briefly coxivera and coxivalga. So just an overview slide here, uh, thinking about Dylan and that question with the genuvarum and genuvalgum. Remember here, we're going to be looking at the distal segment of the bone. Okay, so the distal segment of the bone is what we're going to look at. So this A picture is going to be a normal femur angle. Uh, again, so in this B, we're going to be pushing the distal segment towards the midline. 
So that would make this coxa vera. You can see that there. We're pushing the distal femur towards the midline. And then finally, we'll have coxa valga, which is pushing that distal segment of this bone away from the midline. So we've got coxa vera and coxa valga. A femur angle less than 120 degrees is going to lead to a coxa vera here. And then a femur angle, so this angle, so the, the relationship between the femoral head and neck with the shaft of the femur, a femur angle greater than 135 is going to be considered a coxa valga. Therefore, anything between 120 degrees and 135 degrees will be a, a normal femoral angle here uh, between the femoral head and neck in relationship to the shaft of the femur. So moving in a little bit, so again, th this is how uh, we can calculate this angle on a radiograph or an MRI. So the neck shaft angle generally decreases over time. So we go into more of a coxa, uh, coxa vera, remember, a coxa vera over time. So uh, you can see as time progresses going from a 148, you can see how it just gradually decreases over time until we're an adult and then we normally fall between this 120 and 135, somewhere right in there. Uh, so here's our coxivera again, some symptoms of that. So this is all going to be very dependent on the person. And realize a lot of times in our younger kids, they will experience a little bit more of this coxivalga without any problems. And sometimes you'll actually over, over, overcompensate a little bit and then fall back out into this 120, 135. So... Uh, Take it with a little bit of a grain of salt, but some pain or some stiffness potentially. Um, this difficulty walking would be more in relation to the pain and the stiffness that someone might feel. The reason that there's a shortened limb here, if it pushes, if you have a coxa vera that pushes far enough in that you re really have some genuvalgum, they may, and it's and it's unilateral, right? Then you definitely may have a uh, one side, a leg length. Um, apparent leg length discrepancy, right, Me measuring from that belly button. If you measure a true leg length, it would probably come out the same. However, uh, when you do that apparent leg length for the, from the belly button, they may have a short limb because it may push far enough in. So hopefully you can kind of visualize that in your mind. Um, excessive lordosis, limited abduction, and extension. So again, this is probably going to be related to some of this pain and stiffness. Uh, and then you can potentially imagine a situation where that femoral angle can continue to drift in and in and in, uh, and so it can be progressive. I'm going to just buzz right through that slide, and we're going to come to this coxa valga next. So the coxa valga is a neck shaft angle, again, exceeding 135. So I like this radiograph here that you can see, this x-ray, and I think this highlights... Um, the big problem that's generally associated with this coxa valga. So in a weight-bearing scenario, if someone increases this, uh, this femoral angle, the, the relationship between the femoral head and neck and the, the shaft of the femur, you can see how more and more this femoral head is going to sit superiorly in the acetabulum. And hopefully, hopefully you can visualize that here. And th this is going to lead to a lot of the problems that are associated with the coxa valga, where the further and further, the, the straighter of a line that you essentially develop between your femoral head, femoral neck, and the shaft of the femur, the more this is going to sit out and out and out. Okay? So some causes, lack of normal weight bearing. As we bear weight, this will sit in. You can, you can imagine how this, uh, according to Wolf's Law, how this femoral angle should begin to buckle down. Which is why, as we get older, right, we go, we decrease our coxa valga angle more and more over time. Um, maybe you have a femoral head that that is trying to sit outside of the acetabulum that may contribute to a coxa valga, or a um, a genital, a congenital condition, you know, uh, genetics. So in this coxa valga, you can see this again here. This is in a uh, a growing individual. You can see the growth plates throughout. Um, if this angle becomes severe enough, remember, you'll actually just slip this femoral head out of that acetabulum and it could become very painful. Uh, and in fact, I've heard stories of young kids that have such a coxa valga angle that their hips will actually sublux, uh, sublux fairly readily. 
and the parents don't even know what's going on, but that, that femoral head will slide out. It'll become dislocated uh, or slightly, you know, it'll sublux in and out, in and out, in and out. And, you know, children are just miserable. These kids that are, they can't talk yet and they're just miserable. And, uh, and um, the parents aren't sure why, right? So I've, I've heard stories of that happening where it's just such a Cox Valgate angle that that femoral head will readily slip out. Um, so this is just a, a recap of some of those things we talked about. Coxivera, some normal is right in here. Anything above 135 will be that Coxivalga. Um, and I think that's it. So you can see again here that this neck shaft angle will decrease over time as we bear more weight, right? So we're going to, when we don't bear weight, we'll be less. And then as we age, uh, it'll just decrease over time. And that wraps up this video on Q-Angle, Coxvera, and Coxvalga.